faith groups representing 118 million Americans recently mobilized and called on the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, to enact a strong rule addressing the harms of 300 plus interest payday lending debt traps. The House Financial Services Committee in Congress has voted to move a bill called the Financial Choice Act to the full House. That bill includes the following sentence in reference to the CFPB. The agency may not exercise any rulemaking, enforcement, or other authority with respect to payday loans, vehicle title loans, or other similar loans. For the House Financial Services Committee to now say and introduce legislation that actually will make it such that the CFPB will not be able to issue a rule or enforce that rule says that you don't value the voice of people of faith. And so we, the people of faith, must rise up in this moment. We must let our voice be heard. We must stand true to our scripture that says that you cannot rob the poor just because they are poor. That usury is wrong. This is legalized loan sharking by, and it is supported by our government. And what's more, I think, appalling is that many of our state legislators, and many of our congresspersons are taking campaign contributions from them and they should be shame of themselves. It is time to end predatory lending in Louisiana. Right. And our Catholic faith yeah. demands that we do so. Payday lending harms uh, families. And we've seen it. We've seen it in our congregations. We've seen it in our faith communities. Uh, we've seen it because we've been the ones that will come with our benevolence fund and will come and provide pastoral care when people are so stressed out because of the debt trap that they have gotten themselves involved in, not for any fault of their own, but because it was set up that way. They end up having their bank accounts closed because they have direct access to their accounts. And as people go in to continue to draft that $200 and that fee, they get stuck in muck and mire. We have had uh, complaints uh, from members of our churches as well as members of the community. And what I will do now is share with you some of those complaints uh, that have come to me. Uh, one came from a 70-year-old grandmother uh, who also had uh, challenges as it related to her finances simply because she wanted to get medicine. Uh, she was recently widowed. She went to get a loan that started at $300. She ended up paying over $800 for this $300 loan. Again, a widowed grandmother who is responsible. She did pay it back, and she paid it back in full, but she had to roll it over several times. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you, O oh God, would convert the hearts and minds of those with resources, those who, O oh God, are using their greed to exploit those in need. May they, O oh God, be converted. May they, O oh God, do the right and moral thing. It's a strategy for taking and taking and taking until there's nothing left. So we're here today to call on all people of good faith to call it what it is, to stand up against it, to say it's not a loan, it's a lie. It cannot be part of the way God intends the world to work. So we must stand against it. We really hope that by being able to look at them and present some personal stories, we'll put some skin in the game for them so they can see it's affecting everybody. And hopefully by seeing that it's not just a white man or a black man or a Latino, but we're coming together uh, across uh, races and across religions. There are a lot of people here from different faiths. And uh, I think that our collective voice uh, cannot be ignored. It really diminishes the community's um, economic fabric as well as the individual or family's um, economic fabric. And when that happens, um, money that could be spent in the community or money that could be spent for basic needs isn't available. Um, but more importantly, these loans really tend to diminish the self-worth of the people that come to see us who have these loans. When I travel the country and tell people who are pastors, who are politicians, who are policy makers, that in the last 22 years, more payday loan stores have emerged in this country than McDonald's and Starbucks combined. You can see the words bouncing off their head. They can't believe it. Until we understand that the overlay is economic justice, 
then, then we will find ourselves going further and further apart. There'll be no middle class at all. There'll be a few very rich, and the rest of us will live from paycheck to paycheck if we have a paycheck at all. We believe that our work is not in vain. It will not be in vain because we will continue to speak. We will continue to lift our voices. And you can do so by writing your member of Congress. You can do so by writing letters to the editor. You can do so by tweeting, by putting on Facebook. Use the hashtag Lend Justly. Use the hashtag Wrong Choice Act. Use the hashtag Stop the Debt Trap. Because that's what we believe. And that's how we are united.